Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back at Battle Springs Ranch. As promised, we were gonna do a meat breakdown video today with uh, some might call Redneck Special Forces, Mr. Petey. The way he broke down the deer last time, I, I, I watched this process, it was the cleanest I've ever seen. Like zero hair, zero juices on the meat, it was seriously expert. I can't expert. promise zero hair. I cannot promise that. <laughs> We're going to try our best. Though. It was it was really good. And I actually took notes. Uh, I watched the video back. I, I made a whole list of the steps. Uh, at least on this first one, I want to get PD to kind of show me how he breaks down the different muscle groups of the deer. Show you guys that this is something you can do at home. I think Probably more important than uh, learning the hunting techniques is learning how to break down your own meat and make it taste as good as anything you get from the store. That's a pretty important yeah, if, if step. anybody's ever told you that deer meat's way too game meat, it's just because it wasn't taken care of properly. Exactly, and I've, I've definitely had those. Some I've done myself. Learning, yep. learning. Yep. So we're all gonna learn today. So we got three does, and we're gonna start by taking the skin off. Skin, skin has been on. Yep for a week, I think nine days, something like that, so. And you can always, after we skin this deer, you could let it hang with the skin off for another, I mean. That's at least what you typically week. do? Yeah, yeah. It'll just firm up a little more aging and it's not gonna hurt anything to not do it. Um, you have less waste because it's not as dried out, but I think you get a little more tender product and a little more flavorful product because of that aging process. But this is still a great way what's it, 10, 9, 10 days, whatever it's been. Um, it, it's you can tell. Yeah. It's darker. Yeah. I always go, so the grain of the hair is going this way. Uh -huh. I try to go, try not to cut that hair in half as much as you possibly can. That's what does. That's what, that's what actually starts releasing the hair worse. Okay. So like, if right. you came down across it and cutting all those, it's just going to release more hair. All right. That's so cool. I, you know, you can see it's going this way. I still got to come across it some, but come up there, come up there, and then you just peel over. Peel and then down. Over and then you'll... Power down. Show us the first steps of going skin off. Just going up the uh, the shanks, and box. And also, sharpest knife is gonna be a very, very big key to Doing a clean job. Clean job and safe, really. I mean, it's, if you've got a dull knife and you're sitting there wailing away with it, you're more likely to cut yourself with a dull knife than you are a sharp knife. Okay, all right, so that was step one. Split the back, you go ahead and cut through the meat there. Oh yeah, you can hear that the fat capsules just cracking. And the other thing that makes it a lot easier is tension. Whether you're pull. cutting meat or skin, it's tension. You can see that connective tissue. I mean, pulling on it makes it to where it separates that skin, that hide from that muscle. And then we talked about it a little bit uh, when we hung these deer. That's why, one, I like to get the hawks off because they pee on them, so I don't want that in my cooler. Okay, So yeah. I get the hawks off, but also it makes it better and easier for you when you got a hang by gambrel to go ahead and skin it down past that, and that way we're just right here, and we don't have to worry about our gambrel being in our way. So this little tendon right here, that, that is what you want to be careful and don't cut, because that's what's supporting your deer. And you can see how easy this skin is coming off. It just, when it sits there and ages, it's either right after you kill the deer, it skins really easy, or letting it hang for, you know, this week, 10 days, or whatever it is. It's a lot easier to skin your deer. It's almost like a fried chicken. And we've already broken the tail yep. during the skinning process for the hang. That's coming off easier than I than I expected on the back. Yeah, once we get past this uh, this flank meat right here, just to be honest, I I never keep any of the flank meat. I 
it's just, I never had it. Unless it's like a Wisconsin 200 pounder? Yeah. <laughs> now we have a skinless deer. We'll come over here, back straps first, first move. Yeah, this is what I wanted to ask you about was where, where do you stop? So you cutting see where that hind quarter comes down right there, and kind of that's kind of your your fall line. But the, I always start. I'm left-handed. I always start going down the spine. You start right there. You can kind of see that that little line, and I go all the way down, even down the shoulder. Okay. Basically down to the neck. So there's this, this layer of skin right here. This will help you. So I got it cut off there. There's this layer of skin. You yeah. put your hands up underneath. Okay. And that's with help, helping to, oh, it, okay. It, it'll show you that back strap a lot better. So, and then there's the shoulder. Okay, so it's just the silver skin there. Yeah. Okay. So that's, you got to remove that anyways. Yep. So. So I go ahead and get it. Out. That's probably easier to see after it's been hanging. Yeah. And so I usually take this front shoulder off first because it'll let you show, show you that whole strap. So once you get that like off there, I grab some of that skin and I start coming down with it because it connects that front shoulder. Oh, okay. All right. And I just work down its ribs. So right there's its ribs and its shoulder. So then. Okay, yeah, I've never done that before. So here we're gonna get some of that neck meat with that shoulder. So if you guys missed that, there was a, there's a, a piece of skin that goes over the, it's, the it's, sinew. We're saying it's skin, it's just, it's a layer. Yeah. It's not actual skin. It's a layer of some sort. We connective took the skin tissue. off, but yeah, connective tissue. And it basically runs all the way down and even connects to this front shoulder. But, but it reveals the ribs and it shows you the back strap really good. Yep. Okay. And, just, and, that and there's connects. no joints in these front shoulders. It's just muscle and connective tissue that keeps them on there. Which is so amazing to me that yeah, that, you know, the way that they run and everything else, there's yeah. no ball joint, no socket, it's just muscle. So there's your front shoulder. As a, as a bow hunter, I mean, looking at that, that, that just tells me, like, you can definitely go with that front shoulder. Yeah, that's the, that's the cool thing about butchering your own animals, is you learn the anatomy so much better. And you can sit there and manipulate that shoulder and arm and look when they got it back, when they got it forward, where's that blade at? That big blade on them? I just don't see anything that would prevent me from taking that front shoulder shot. Some people so say don't once, do it. Once we go with those front shoulders and demuscle them, that's when you can see how it laid against the deer and how that that one ridge on that blade muscle is what you really don't want to hit. So we can see where that kind of where that back strap and that hind quarter kind of start and stop. And I just Come straight across. And you can kind of feel, put, pull your finger in there and you feel that little knot. That's that little bone right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's where you know you're pretty much at the top because that's, it's, it's vertebrae back on this back side. You just try to pull it from there and then just cut away at the tension. So I cut all the way down and then I just cut the top and then, so how those little vertebrae run. Yeah. So it's just that little concave, I just... Okay, from the side. Yeah. And once and you, you get Just kind of work your, yeah. work your knife. Work your knife down it. Like this, on the side of those bones. So here, see, where if I pull too hard, that stuff starts to tear. Okay. Yeah, okay. See it tearing? Oh yeah, super you don't want tender. It to tear. Super tender. Just let your knife graze across that. All the way down in the neck. Yep, and that's basically all that is, is that meat back there. 
it just stays connected to your mesh. Okay, there's that outer connective tissue. Just pulling that down to expose the back strap. Never seen anybody do that. Like I said, I use it to get down here. So. And, and it goes to the shoulder. shoulder. Okay. Wow. Look at that. So the beginning cut on the back strap goes down, then go to the front shoulder, take the front shoulder off, front shoulder removed, then take out the back strap. So I always just kind of generally cut, like I'll cut both, I'll cut down the spine and then I'll cut over here, but I don't know, I don't have a clear lane like you've got here from taking that, that initial yeah. connective skin off. So once you get it down like that, you can kind of study it and see what you're, what you're doing. It gives you that pass, just like you're saying. Down the spine and then just the concaveness of the vertebrae and the ribs. This is somewhat controversial with some people. Like I said, I don't take the flank meat as much and I don't really mess with the rib meat. I mean, there is a lot of work for very little product because yeah. this fat, of deer, the it's, fat it's cap. not, it's not yeah. good. Yeah. You gotta trim every single bit of it off. And you just, the risk isn't, not the risk, the, the work isn't All the work, the you're basically, yeah, filleting off the ribs. Yeah. So, in my book, I'm done with everything, yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, we've got three of them, so yeah. it's, not, it's not like we're struggling to get every ounce here. And so, what I like to do, is to go ahead and get rid of this section just so there's less weight on it. Okay. Just take a look. Move the hatchet, move the saws off, move the whoppers. Wah bam. Look at that. So then you have two hind quarter sections. All right. We've got two different kind of gambles. You see this one's got the hook ends. See the hook ends on that gamble? Yeah. Yep. This is straight ends. These still work great, but these are awesome for what we're about to do. Because one's going to try to fall off. Yes. Okay. Don't just go cutting meat. Right. So I feel the bone, and I'm just working my knife, and you just feel. You're on the pelvis right on there. The pelvis bone. You're going. You're going around the the pelvic yeah. area. Yeah. So I got that started. And you're gonna go I'm, ahead and I'm take not, the muscle groups off no, the leg? No, I'm gonna take the leg off. And take then, it all off, okay, cool, cool. So we just did that on that side, and then on okay. this side, same thing. I'm following that that bone. Okay. Yep, looks there's like that, that, there's that bone. That ball there. joint right there on that side. The ball joint is inside, but yep, I just go whoop, okay. right around that. Make your little C cut and then straight down towards the tail. Now, I do that. Once I do that, that's when you're using the pressure again. So, pull up. One, now okay. Ah, up. now gravity is going to be our friend. So, you see where we follow that pelvic? There's that ball joint. Yep. Already. Okay, yep. You're just cutting the connective tissue around the ball joint. Yeah. yeah don't don't just let just let the actual just the okay. weight of it. And then you just come in. You're just reaching in there and getting it off that pelvic area. There's a caveman stake right there. Yeah, good. So we can see there's very little yep, right waste on the, right there. Awesome. Very little waste. Okay. So same thing with this one. We just have, we're going to use pressure against this one. Just going to pull on the pel pelvic bone a little bit. This, like I said, I don't have an exact science on this really. I just, just feel start, it. start feeling it and going. And like I said, can, cutting against the bone. Excellent. 
Very little waste right there, guys. Very little waste. Sometimes I cut these off to fit them in the cooler, but it's real nice to have it on there. So I'll put it between my legs. Look at this. Okay, this is pro stuff right here. And you can see using this the pressure is where that joint from your ham to your shank, your thigh to your calf. You see that? That. Ooh. Ooh okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. And then if you tip and oop, you hear it. Yep. That's me popping in that joint. Yeah, you got it first try. So using gravity. Using gravity. Now I, if I was by myself, I'd just walk over my cutting board, hold on, boop, boom, off the shank. All that's left is, is that femur. That, yeah, if you want any more of that shank meat, I mean, just take it over there. And there's, there's our burger stuff. Yep. Make a little burger pile. Okay. So just that right there, y'all, I've, I've learned a lot. Taking notes. Taking notes on those little tricks. It's November, right? supposed to be cold but it's like 70 degrees outside yeah if you have access to a cooler or inside your home to try to keep it as cold like we just took this off that deer it didn't take us very long right i still want to get this meat back in the cooler to keep it cold keep your meat as cold as you can while you process it. so breaking these down the easiest way i can tell you is it's all about seams okay. every one of these muscles there's a seam that separates it from the other muscle Yep, looking at these yes. different runs of fat. So this muscle right here, I just I always call it the football roast. I think it's pretty close to its technical term. Just start on that seam very lightly, breaking it open. So You're just kind of doing this all at once, cutting all the seams that you see. Whatever yeah, this, you see. This is the one that I follow. And then, so once I get it here, there's this muscle that's tucked in there and on that one. Like I said, this just the way I do it and you'll learn the more that you do it what seems you're gonna follow and make it easier for you but I don't want to hit that that muscle with my knife so you can see there's a seam with it too little lymph node right there lymph node that's like a gland yeah okay that's it right there Yep, that's the lymph node. Okay. So that's we, something you don't want in your meat. Okay, cut that out. I'll be honest, I've never cut out any glands on the back quarter. Probably just eating them. <laughs> it's just... and, so, and I'm not positive on this, but I think some of that will give that wang in some of your burger and stuff okay. like that. All right. I want the wang in the burger. This is definitely burger. Shank, yep, shank tops. Roll it over. So that sirloin muscle is right up here, right there. Okay. So again, that's, that's the real tender it's part. It's a small part, but it's very tender. Mmm. Delicioso. That right there, I just clean up a little bit of that off of there. Throw it on the clean grill. a little bit off of there. I keep that, even though that silver skin, I just don't want to waste because it's small. Yep. I don't want to waste it. Man, olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic, hot grill, medium rare. Perfect. Well, bam. So got a little bit yep. of so this, break down there. I think they call this the inside round steak. It's, I've always just called it the faux pas tenderloin because it looks like a tenderloin, <laughs> but it's not. And it really is used a lot. It's not a very tender cut. It really isn't. So you go burger, looks, burger on that one? You can go burger or you can, um, because it looks like a tenderloin and it's actually a pretty cool little steak, just clean that stuff off of it. You can hot and fast it and then slow cook it and break it down Okay. and it'll be better. But slicing it real thin too. Like after you just cook it like this and just slice it thin, it's not bad. That's one of the few, I mean, that's really one of two muscles you're actually having to cut off the bone, yep. really. Yep. The rest are just seams. And this one's a little weird because that, that joint right here, you can feel it. So you got to kind of come up and around. 
Mm, okay. Up and around that. Femur. Dog, dog, dog treats. Dog treats. Yeah. Okay. Fido. And so there's that football muscle. This is the Oops. last cut. Yeah. So you can see it kind of underneath there where it's connecting to this other muscle. It's Football roast. It's done. All right, yeah, from there, just, just cleaning up a little bit some of the skins. Yep, and so, like, so skin. this muscle, if you're going to do it in ground, I would just clean up the outside of all this and then vacuum seal it or chop it up and grind it. So this is one of my favorite muscles to freeze whole, and you can use it for ground meat, you can use it for roast, you can slice it for jerky. Then it's a pretty good-sized muscle in that hind quarter. What about the football right here? What's what's your take on it? Same same thing. You can use it as a roast. You can use it as cutting up for grind. You can slice it for jerky. None of these cuts do I generally cut for steaks except for that certain one. Okay. This and this one are would be your two best options if you wanted to cut steaks, but I don't. I like having my back straps, my tenderloins. And that sirloin as my steak. Everything else I use for ground, jerky, or stew meat. You can chop it up for stew meat, whatever you want. So, none of your fat on your whitetails do you want, and none of that sinew. That sinew will still grind up fine, but it's different than, than cows. Like the cow fats, those, those will just melt in, but with deer, it just seems like it just makes it taste gamey. Yeah, they have a word for it. I think it's like tallow or something. Ta it's not yeah. Ta ta yeah, something like that. It's not actual fat. Like it's like wax. Yeah. I want you guys to see. So this is the back strap right here. Creme de la creme, besides the tendies. You've got some silver skin on here. Don't want to eat that. How do you get that off? So you see that, that silver skin running all the way down it, and you can see this meat sitting on top of it, okay? stuff that's just connected to it runs down that vertebrae okay. good for grind but it's not you can tell the difference between the loin and this stuff it just makes it easier on yourself to get it off okay so again where those muscles are laying on top of that silver skin like filleting a fish I go go down and don't cut the silver skin and then you just fillet it. Uh -huh. And so <clears throat> that little muscle is part of that hind quarter muscle that flips over on top. So you just trim that off, throw in your grind pile. That little bit of silver skin in the grind pile is not going to hurt anything. I just throw it straight into my grind pile. Okay. So then you have this beautiful loin to throw on the smoker, on the grill. Just clean up a little bit of oxidation, a little bit of this white tallow. Work with yep, so now, okay. just like that fish skin, you got that, and you just fillet it. Good to have a flexible knife. Yes. Right there. Almost like a fillet knife. Using that meat crafter. I like that knife. Bench made meat crafter. Oh, all right, guys. We have got now two. Two deer broken down. Here's another look that I just did this one myself. So all this will go in the meat bag. I'll trim these up a little bit more for the burger meat. And then whatever I want to make into like protein bowls, steaks, soups, we'll just kind of pick out the, the best cuts for that. And we'll try our hand at making burger meat. We are back in the kitchen to do our final stages of the meat breakdown. Guys, hopefully you've learned something so far. I know I have from Petey. Shout out to him. I learned a lot actually on the initial skinning and cutting uh, that's that's the cleanest operation I've ever seen anybody do. And a lot of it has to do with the order of things. 
uh, the, the order that you go in the different sections of the body to skin things to make things easier, make the cuts, make things go very cleanly and smoothly. Uh, same thing on the meat breakdown. Uh, you know, I've probably processed between a dozen and 15 deer on my own over the last four or five years, and I've, I've come a long way, but I'm still trying to learn everything that I can and make it the best cleanest, best tasting meat possible. That is the goal. You know, the more advanced I get as an outdoorsman, that's it. You know, with my fish and my, my meats, I want it to be as good as I can get going to the grocery store. In fact, better. Completely new thing. I got a, a, a ham, hamburger, a meat grinder. So I'm taking a lot of the cuts that are less desirable and I'm cubing them up into about one inch cubes. Um, I'm going to vacuum seal those, we'll freeze them, and then when we want to make fresh burger, we'll make fresh burger. One last thing I want to show you guys, the best thing that I found uh, to get these, because this does not taste good, so we, we want to get that, basically, we want to get just the meat on the outside. Instead of sitting here with a knife, and believe me, I've done this sit here and you just kind of cut away the little pieces and then it just ends up looking like a cheetah of just different fat spots. Um, I like to clean these like I would a fish. So I'll take a spot that has a little thicker section of uh, fat cap or sinew, whatever it is, sometimes combination of both, and just treat it as like a crappie filet that I cut all the way off the tail and it's just laying there on the table. You need a flexible knife, just like a fillet knife. And that stuff is really tough, really tough. So I'll slide it under the meat and then once I can kind of grab that stuff, I'll get a good grip on it, lay it really flat and I'll just start cutting, cutting the whole thing. Lay it as flat as possible. And you really want to pull on it hard. Ah, I feel like it broke a little of the way, yeah. We got most of it off. There's just that little section right here that should, should just pull off now. There we go, y'all. Now we got ourselves a couple of big chunks right here. These, these cuts of meat right here, I think they're, um, Part of the rounds, they got these long grains. They can actually be cut up and, and used as steaks. That's what I'm gonna do with these. The rest, uh, you know, obviously besides the back straps and the tendies, that's all, that's all gonna be steaks. The rest is gonna be turned into burger. So I'll just vacuum seal these whole and then burger the rest. That's it, y'all. We are officially done with deer breakdown. I'm about to take these to the deep freezer I've just got them in the cooler right now. Everything from beautiful back straps, tri-tips, oh, that's something different. We got our burger bags mixed up. So I'm gonna make fresh ground meat out of these. I've just gotta find me some, some local beef fat or pork fat to mix in with those and all the rest of it, guys. So hopefully you learned something in today's video. I know I did. And I'm just continuing to learn the breakdown and the processing of the meat. I think it's so important, so important to know this as an outdoorsman, not just to, you know, shoot your buck, mount it, and then the meat kind of comes secondary. It's like, eh, you know, get the back straps and I'll do an okay job cleaning. Take pride in your work and that meat is gonna be delish. So I will see you guys on another outdoor adventure soon. Make sure to smash that like button. We got mule deer hunt coming up. So stay tuned, I'll see you out there.